Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a software tutorial, this time though using Minitab as our software of choice. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's uh, Minitab tutorial well, we are going to take a look at measurement system analysis using Minitab. Now, before we take a look at what the software gets up to, let's just have a little uh, discussion about what MSA does. Out in your manufacturing site, your production equipment, your manufacturing equipment, is producing a distribution. Now, of course, you would like to see that distribution, but before you can see that distribution, you have to put the components through another process. You have to put them through a measuring process. And the measuring process also has a distribution. So you can never see the original red distribution. So of course that's the underlying performance that you'd like to know. The green distribution adds variability to it. And actually what you see is this dark blue result, which is always bigger than the original result that is underlying it and the difference between the two is your measurement error. MSA very simply what does it do? It quantifies it. It tells you how big the measurement error is. So today we're going to take a look at this technique using Minitab. Now in order to quantify this technique, whatever software you use, there is a basic methodology that we're going to use. And it looks like this. You are going to identify 10 parts. When you identify them, you are going to select them randomly most important that it is random you do not pre-select so you are not going to pre-select good ones and bad ones you are simply going to randomly collect 10 pieces of whatever you're trying to understand so a measurement system is made up of the machine the method the component or material that you're measuring, the environment that you are in, and the person who is conducting the test. That is a measurement system. The machine, which of course you calibrate, is might be under control, but the specific task, the specific shape of the product that you're trying to measure, etc., is what's in the 10 parts. This is a specific test for a specific measurement. And then what we're going to do, we are going to give the parts out in random order. The measurement system will make a judgment. Come up with measurements. Then you ask the same measurement system to measure again. Something which is very important, the measurement system must be blind to the part number. So in other words, when you give back part number 5, you will do so randomly. So you can give the part out first, 1 to 10, not a problem. But second time, give it back in random order 
and the measurement system mustn't know that this is part number five and they have a second attempt to measure it again then a second attempt to measure it again you give them back randomly of course what we would hope for is that we get an identical measurement when we measure second time any difference here of course is error then what you do is you give them to operator 2 and they will do the same thing they will have an attempt to measure the part again so you give it out in run order first of all obviously you do 10 of these I'm only writing 5 out you give it out in run order first of all then you give it out randomly the second time and you're hoping that the measurement system comes up with a similar or the same result any variability here of course is error and finally of course if you look across the this way you will also get error so there's two types of error one type of error is within system one type of error is between system and that's what the MSA is going to look for now we don't call it within and between the within system is called repeatability the between system is called reproducibility okay it would be a lot better if we called it within and between but unfortunately they don't but that's where the phrase gauge R&R &R comes from it stands for repeatability and reproducibility so we've got our data collected and now of course what we want to do is to go to the software and put it in a software table so let's go and have a look how Minitab does this so here is a Minitab worksheet and you can see here is my data in the table form that I collected it now the reason why I want it in table form common sense says it's easy for me to look across the row and just use my common sense am I getting the same result or not and if you look at this particular pattern here I'm clearly not getting the same result so even before I press the button on the calculation I'm getting a sense of how good or bad my measurement system is so I've got that in that table but unfortunately Minitab doesn't want it like that it doesn't like me to do that it wants me to have it in a column of information so you can see here look over here I've set one up and I've typed you can see this data point look has been typed in here but here we go look parts part one first measurement operator one operator two part two first measurement operator one operator two so you can see that the, the mini tab wants it in a very different pattern down this table now this is quite a strange pattern to set up but fortunately mini tab has shortened this procedure now because they give you a little uh, wizard that will set this pattern up for you so if I go to worksheet 2 which is blank and I'll show you the way that Minitab sets up the column of data for you so we're gonna go stat quality tools gauge study and it says create a gauge study worksheet now the one we're doing is crossed this is for non-destructive testing but the first thing I've got to do is set up this worksheet so nowadays the old mini tab you had to kind of do this manually nowadays we um, 
we can do this uh, automatically so there's a little wizard that helps you to do this and it says look how many parts have you got well I had 10 how many operators did I have uh, I had two I can either name them if I want which would then put the, the information in the spreadsheet I'm just going to leave it as operator one and operator two and how many replicates did they do how many times did they measure the same part well they did that twice so with all of those numbers in the box if I just press OK now look it said part number one operator one operator two so the whole thing is in the right order and it's put that in a worksheet for me now I've already taken this data and transferred it across it's a little bit of heavy duty lifting to do it because it isn't in the same pattern or anywhere near the same pattern in the way that I collected the data but that is definitely as a table that's the best way to collect the data so now I've typed all the data into this uh, spreadsheet and now Minitab is ready for the analysis let's do that stat quality tools gauge study and we're going to choose crossed let's go there and it says okay where are the part numbers now re weirdly it ought to know this but it doesn't I have to tell it parts are in the parts column operators are in the operators column and where's the data it's in the C4 column so the measurement data is in C4 now you'll notice look there's two methods X bar R and ANOVA ANOVA is recognized as the best analytical method it comes up with a better estimate of the variability however the one thing I will say when would you use X bar R if you don't have two measurement systems so in other words if you only have one measurement system that's doing two or three repeats you can only use the X bar R the ANOVA will not calculate so that's the reason why that choice is there essentially but the best providing you've got the data the best estimate is ANOVA and then we're gonna go okay so I've got some calculations here um, just to just to clarify the MSA is trying to answer three questions number one is my measurement system any good Now, of course, if we assume that the answer to the first question is no, then the next thing we want to know is, where is my problem? And finally, what am I going to do? What am I going to do about it? So we're going to answer those three questions from the data that I've just generated in Minitab. Let's go back to Minitab. Okay, here's the, here's the data that I've uh, created. Uh, I'm going to take a look down at the graphs because the graphs are kind of important. So you can see there's lots of, there's lots of information here. If I just pop the graph out. Uh, so this is known as the... Um, the MSA it's, it's kind of the MSA report there you can see look it's telling you which column of data and the graphs are very useful for the second two questions where is my problem and what am I going to do about it so let's pop that back in because first of all we need to answer the first question so is my measurement system any good well if you look at the statistic here the gauge evaluation look 30% of all the variability that I'm seeing is coming from my measurement system 
so this is telling me I think it said 32% that component right there 32% that is unacceptable normally we want to get this thing down to 10% yeah so 32% it's being inflated by 32% so there's question number one the first question was is my measurement system any good no I looked at the at the contribution 32% not acceptable right where is my problem now what I'm going to do I'm going to look at the graphs okay so we've before we look at the graphs we've got the study variation here which is 32% which you've said is unacceptable now what I want to do look where's my problem I want to look at the repeatability and reproducibility and I'm going to look at these two numbers here now I'm just looking at their relative size to one another so look how big they are the repeatability problem is much bigger than the re reproducibility problem so my problem it's not that I haven't got between system variability but a bigger problem is between is within system so systems are struggling to agree with each other now if you look at if you look at the results here if I just get the results table up and just use your common sense so what we're talking about look is the errors there we're not getting we're not getting agreement within system so both of these systems look they're struggling to repeat their measurements there was uh, quite a large millimeter difference there there's quite a large millimeter difference there that's much better um, that one's not too bad some of these some of these look you know nearly a quarter of a millimeter difference so they're really struggling to repeat their measurement that's where most of the problem lies so if we go back to our questions where is my problem mostly within system it is within system it's not to say that we don't have to improve the between system as well but there is a much bigger component within system now what am I going to do about it let's go back to mini tab so we've decided that it's within system what am I going to do about it well now what I'm going to do I'm going to look at the graph let's pop this thing out and we'll have a look at the graphs so the, the graphs look the, the Pareto at the top is showing you the component. There's the part-to-part -part variability. You can see I've got a bigger repeatability problem than reproducibility uh, problem. That's what we've already decided. If you look at the operator graph down here, you can see that the results are sitting nicely over the top of one another. What good would look like here is you would see one line because the two operators would perfectly agree with each other the other graph I'm going to look at is this one because this one over here is the range between the first and second measurement the left hand side is operator one the right hand side is operator two what would good look like here a flat line at zero because zero would mean they are repeating their measurements perfectly now clearly operator one is much better than operator two because the range is much smaller so if we answer the question what are we going to do about this we are going to have to train this operator with a better method and maybe we'll include this operator in defining what the method should be so a better standard operating procedure is what's needed here because this is quite a manual activity that I've used here and this person could certainly help to train this person but we don't just want them to help to train we want them to write a good standard operating procedure that we can give to anybody so that would be the end of the question what am I going to do we're gonna have a better SLP trained to operator 2 
probably with the help of operator one. And there's the three questions answered using Minitab. Is my measurement system any good? Where is my problem within or between? And what am I going to do about it? So Minitab, it's a little bit more tricky. You've got to set the data up in a template. I would always collect the data using this uh, table because it's very easy to use your common sense and to look across the row and say, how did we do? Did we get consistency? Or have I got lots of within variability? Have I got lots of between variability? And you can do that very easily with a table before you start. But unfortunately, Minitab doesn't want it like this. So you then have to use the, use the wizard. The wizard makes it much easier now. Use the wizard to set it up. And then you can answer the three questions. Measurement system any good? Where's my problem? What am I going to do about it? That's what Minitab does for you. There is MSA using Minitab. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on that subject. If you've got any questions about Minitab that you want me to help you with, or indeed any questions about Six Sigma uh, at all, or indeed Lean, please drop me a message either in the comments below. Please subscribe also. Um, but you can also leave me an email. If you send me an email on any question and you need a little bit of advice, I'm more than happy to help you out. And of course, if you want me to come and help you inside your factory fix a technical problem, please drop me a line. I hope to hear from you soon.